Hi everyone, welcome to our talk today. Hope everybody is doing great. This is Abhinav Jashi, Director for Product Marketing at Red Hat. I have over 20 years of industry experience in various roles on both the customer side as well as on the vendor side around the key areas such as virtualization, cloud computing, data analytics, and AI ML. Uh, I've been with Red Hat over four years now and I manage a team of awesome product marketing managers who focus on driving workloads uh, focused conversations uh, and also on content marketing. And joining me today is my friend Matt Atkins from NVIDIA. In the next few minutes, we will talk about how you can accelerate your AI ML projects with enterprise grade ML ops powered by open source technologies. Over to you, Matt, to introduce yourself and get us started. Thanks, Abhinav, and thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, I'm Matt Akins with NVIDIA. Uh, so I've been with NVIDIA for about three years now. Uh, prior to that, I've spent a lot of time in the open source community uh, and infrastructure software. Uh, I, I've done everything from an architect role to, uh, to a sales role uh, and everything in between. So uh, again, thanks for having us here and excited to talk to you about uh, our collaboration with Red Hat as of late. So as everyone knows, NVIDIA has been in the AI space for quite some time now. Uh, we obviously got our start in uh, graphics processing, but now as the world evolves, very similar type compute uh, has been shown as a trend in the AI space. Uh, instead of putting video out, <laughs> it's taking video in. Uh, parallel computing is at the heart uh, of everything we do, uh, and it's something that GPUs do quite well. Um, as we've studied the space and seen the space grow, uh, we, we've seen a number of different trends. You know, no longer are AI projects subject to just data scientists, you know, ML ops, that sort of thing. Uh, it really touches every single piece of an enterprise. Um, and we've seen that as folks begin to adopt, um, it, it can affect the business in, in so many different ways. Um, they can grow competitive advantages. You know, the, the first folks, the early adopters have really shown um, huge trends in, in their business, uh, whether it be in retail, um, you know, with, with suggested carts. Um, they can be everything from backend data center uh, workloads to, to consumer facing uh, trends. Next slide. So not only is it specific to one certain part of a business, but we see the trends in, in all sorts of industries as well. Uh, whether it be you know, mapping genomes from healthcare to uh, financial services, risk detection, that sort of thing. Uh, telco, even far out to the edge, uh, we are at the heart of everything powering 5G. Um, even insurance again, you know, insurance fraud, that sort of thing, fraud detection. Uh, and even in automotive, uh, automotive is, is a great example because you know, we're, we're present all the way from autonomous driving all the way back to uh, the machines that build the cars and you know, to the data center and, and everywhere in between. Again, this is what MLOps is all about. It's, it's very similar to you know, a, a typical DevOps play that you'll see uh, prior, but um, it, with the ML aspects, you know, it, it really does, it really does take an army. Uh, every single line of business needs to be able to work in lockstep uh, to be able to provide the data uh, and, and get everybody uh, on the same page for the same, same goal and expecting the same outcome. Lack of data is not a problem. But the data can be siloed and not always as easily accessible for you know, operations, IT admins. Uh, oftentimes, especially when training model, it can be stuck back in uh, with the data scientists uh, and, and you know, may not be seen uh, or easily accessed by other lines of business. So to go a little bit deeper into that, um, as I mentioned, you know this this sort of this sort of flow chart would look very familiar to everyone uh, who's familiar with traditional DevOps. Um, but again, with ML Ops, there are different expectations, and everyone needs to be in lockstep throughout every piece of the uh, from developing a model to training it to running it out into uh, inference production. Um, every single line of business needs to touch those. So it's usually 
you know, comes from a traditional line of business. Uh, they have some sort of need. Um, and then that's pushed off to the data engineers for traditional model training. Um, again, these are typically done on very purpose-built, uh, high-performance computing platforms um, and, and may not intersect with other lines of business. Uh, as that model then matures, you know, the, the data scientists will typically be more hands-on, but you know, it, still the business, the line of business still needs to be involved to make sure that the model is trending in the right direction uh, and isn't following tangential um, paths in order to, to achieve the ultimate goal when it goes out into production. By that time, it reaches the app developers and the IT operations. Again, these are purpose built on very specific hardware typically um, that the IT admins may not have access to. Um, and if they, if the application brings certain hardware requirements, that might be new things for IT admins. Um, you know, we at NVIDIA, we realize that everybody is not accustomed to working with GPUs. Uh, and honestly, that's really at the heart of what we do to with our partnership with Red Hat is to make GPUs easily consumable um, and accessible for anyone across your enterprise. So again, uh, when I refer to the, the stack that's a little bit unique and individual for the ML platform, uh, you know, the infrastructure, again, this is pretty typical uh, across any sort of enterprise. Um, you know, this could be physical, virtual, uh, as far out as the edge, as accessible as the public cloud. Um, what's unique in the ML layer is actually where NVIDIA resides, which is on the, which is on the acceleration layer. Uh, we accelerate in traditional compute as well as networking. Uh, with our recent acquisition of Mellanox, we've, uh, we've brought new components into the table um, to, to break down the even fewer bottlenecks. Um, so where the initial bottlenecks were around CPU only compute, uh, then the next were around IO throughput, that sort of thing. Uh, and that's exactly where the GPU comes into play. Um, and then the, from the next level up again, uh, very popular in enterprise today uh, is, is everything around containerization. Uh, we really need strong partners in this area like Red Hat uh, to be able to uh, to be able to, to provide an intelligent orchestration layer to provide to maintain all of these you know heterogeneous platforms uh, and complex workloads across the enterprise. Uh, and then on top of that, again, you know the typical data lakes, um, you know SQL databases, uh, that sort of thing. Those are again, you know, I'll be the first to say those are not <laughs> Nvidia's specialty, but they're going to be at the heart of every enterprise compute platform. Uh, so they, they need to be done. It doesn't need to necessarily be accelerated by a GPU, but that's where something like OpenShift comes into play to be able to dynamically manage those types of workloads. Um, and then again, NVIDIA partners a lot with uh, the open source community to make sure that uh, the tools and containers that are specific to AI uh, run as efficiently and accelerated as predicted uh, on top of these platforms. So that's why we partner with TensorFlow, Jupyter, uh, Python, you know, we even have our own uh, repository uh, that's free for all NVIDIA customers uh, called NGC. Um, and all these containers, again, and pre-built models are tested on OpenShift and, and available to the public. Thanks, Matt. To make the MLOps architecture real, all the persona involved in the AI project have to collaborate throughout the project and also operate as one team aligned on business priorities. The line of business managers are focused on maximizing the revenue and lowering the cost. They are a great resource of information for data scientists and developers to get an accurate understanding of the business needs. The models can be trained and developed faster when the line of business is involved and providing guidance. For example, consider a recommendation engine developed pre-COVID using customer data generated before we all started working from home. Now the buying habits have changed dramatically for many industries. So the recommendations based on the pre-COVID buying preference would probably predict a very different result during COVID and now post-COVID. The marketing department might not know what those preferences are, but they know that their recommendation algorithms need to be updated with more current data. 
Now the AI practitioners, such as the data engineers, data scientists, and software developers, desire self-service access to software tools, data, and high-performance uh, computing infrastructure at the location of their choice so that they can get their job done quickly without having to depend uh, on IT operations for all the day-to-day -day requests. Now, being able to automate these repetitive tasks, have consistency to develop once and quickly deploy anywhere, and auto scale as needed is top of mind for these persona. Now, the AI practitioners would benefit from a modern cloud-native development platform powered by open source technologies such as containers and Kubernetes with integrated DevOps capabilities to achieve their goals. And their friends in IT operations are responsible for providing and maintaining this cloud platform and the required data resources. They have to ensure that these important IT resources are always available, highly scalable, secure, and easy to manage. From cost efficiency perspective, they would prefer enhancing existing infrastructure versus ripping and replacing with new that may cost a lot of time uh, and also the money. Now, going back to the architecture slide, we have been working jointly for several years between NVIDIA and Red Hat to enable open source powered MLOps for many organizations globally. And all this open source software across the Red Hat and NVIDIA portfolio is better tested, secure, scalable, and interoperable with technologies from the partner ecosystem. So you still maintain the flexibility with your architecture while getting a very prescriptive um, and a fully tested solution. Also, all this also comes with professional expertise to help with the much needed people and process transformation required to make the initiative a great success. Here are some of the many organizations globally that have accelerated the delivery of AI-powered intelligent applications to, by deploying open source-powered MLOps architecture. All these organizations have benefited from the enterprise-grade open source technologies from NVIDIA and Red Hat and other providers to achieve the desired business outcomes. Now let's hear directly from the head of AI at Turkcell on what enterprise grade open source means to them in order to operationalize the AI project at scale and achieve the key business outcomes. Now, speaking of this organization, they operate within Turkey and also internationally. Um, so Turkcell currently serves more than 48 million customers with a wide range of communications and digital service offerings. Life is changing, technology is changing. Actually, it is an era of getting away from the ready tools to the open source world. Open source is good because it's a community contributed actually environment. Uh, with the open source, you have flexibility. You can easily manage and uh, monetize your resources and your components. Using the open source, you have also opportunity to get the support from the community all over the world. So this is important for us. We think that uh, creating a AI solution, creating an AI platform, it is not just the thing that you can achieve inside of the company. You should build the ecosystem inside of the company, outside of the company. Inside of the company, you should have a strong team with experts, with developers, with product managers, with business people, and with infrastructure guys. AI is nothing without using enough infrastructures. Outside of the company, it is ecosystem, it is startups, it is universities, it is academic people. It is uh, some big companies, some platform providers, some infrastructure providers. You should embrace all these elements inside of your um, solution, inside of architecture, inside of your business strategy. So open source is the future of the, actually, the technology, future of the world, and we see open source is a very critical part of our system. Now we converted all our ready models into the open source, and the, our actually the models performance is 30% higher than the previous. Reddit means to us reliability, customer focus, innovations, and of course, open source. Now let's dive a little bit deeper uh, into their goals, challenges, what they built, and the business outcomes they're achieving. They had several challenges to take the AI project from pilot to production. First, 
their legacy infrastructure platform got in the way for them to quickly roll out AI powered application and digital services. Second, approaching the AI project as a monolith and not as a cloud initiative also slowed the progress. And it required them to invest a lot in expensive resources, impacting the cost of the project. And third, the lack of automation and orchestration of important tasks across various persona also negatively impacted the time to roll out new digital services for the customers. To solve these challenges, they built a scalable hybrid cloud platform powered by enterprise grade open source software. This helped them democratize data science as now the AI practitioner have self-service access to the tools and the data needed to build the AI capabilities uh, as they need them. This cloud platform is based on containers and Kubernetes that also includes integration with technologies such as Jupyter Labs, NVIDIA GPUs, and so on to help speed up the important modeling and the inferencing tasks. It helped them transition from a slow monolithic architecture to a modern cloud native architecture that also helped achieve consistency, security, scalability, and high availability for the entire DevOps life cycle. The cloud platform also includes the DevOps capabilities to automate the MLOps life cycle and also to speed the delivery of the AI models and the associated intelligent applications into production anywhere, consistently and in a repeatable way. Now, going back to the architecture slide that we've already showed you a couple of times. Now, layering on the software stack that, that uh, Turkcell deployed, this is their high-level MLOps architecture stack. It shows the various enterprise-grade open source technologies uh, used up and down the stack including the ones from NVIDIA and Red Hat. And you may recognize many of these from your own environment as well, or something that you may have evaluated as part of your due diligence as you are looking to design your own solution. Now let's get to the benefits. With this solution, Turkcell has been able to double the speed at which they can roll out new and differentiated AI services to the market. At the same time, they have been able to achieve operational efficiencies and save up to 70% on the costs associated with developing and delivering these services. Finally, they have been able to make the AI playground available to the developers and data scientists from across the organization so they can innovate at their pace without having to depend on IT operations for every small request. While innovative organizations such as Turkcell and several others have been able to take the best of the breed open source software from various vendors and put it all together in a stack to enable MLOps, we believe that for the mass adoption across organizations for various use cases will require the open source community to think in terms of an integrated AI platform that has been pre-tested, certified, fully supported, and almost ready for AI practitioners so that they can start using it instantly to develop AI capabilities rather than spending months trying to configure the infrastructure resources and the software tools. This is where Red Hat and NVIDIA have been collaborating and have brought new open source solution to the market. And at this point, I'm going to bring back Matt to tell you more about it and wrap things up for today. Sabinov, I uh, really appreciate running through that uh, use case with Turkcell. It's always one of my favorite ones to hear. Um, so I just want to dig in a little bit more about the partnership that we have forged between ourselves and Red Hat. Um, while we've been partnering and working together to some extent for over 10, 12 years, uh, really reached a new high um, in 2019 with the release of our NVIDIA GPU operator. Um, now, I don't want to get too deep in the weeds, as I know that this is an, um, an excessively technical discussion. Um, but if you're not familiar with the operator framework, basically an operator is a way for third parties uh, to be able to communicate with, uh, with Kubernetes. Um, and GPUs very much fall into that category of, of third party resources. Uh, the way that uh, GPUs used to communicate with 
Kubernetes was through a series of plugins. We had a plugin through our drivers, uh, our, our container runtime, uh, DCGM for monitoring, uh, and, you know, and, and so on and so forth. Everything that we had that needed to be run on top of a GB, uh, Kubernetes cluster uh, was, was a series of plugins. Um, this is obviously a very manual process. Um, you know, I, again, in a former life, I had to, <laughs> I had to lose a few weekends of my own uh, just to make sure that uh, GPUs were uh, properly added upstream uh, into a Kubernetes cluster. Um, and then not only that, but being able to find them within the cluster once they've been added. In 2019, with the release of the GPU operator, those days are gone. Uh, now all of our plugins are uh, encapsulated within the GPU operator. So the a user needs only to install the GPU operator on a node with a GPU, uh, and that becomes automatically uh, uploaded into that OpenShift cluster. And customers can manage that um, simply through their GUI dashboard uh, with OpenShift, as, as easy as a right click. Um, in future, this is something that's fully open source, um, and you know, available to all uh, GPU customers today. Um, we are, it's something that's still in the forefront of our focus and something that we're adding functionality to on an almost monthly basis. Um, the latest additions that we've added are our uh, feature discovery nodes and DCGVM for monitoring. The feature discovery allows you to have a heterogeneous uh, data plane of uh, servers with GPUs or without GPUs, and they're all properly labeled, even different types of GPUs and MIG control as well. MIG, multi-instance GPU, is basically a form of virtualization for GPUs, which allows for one GPU to be split up into six or seven uh, consumable bytes within a container. So even though the GPU operator is open source, uh, a, a lot of the software that NVIDIA puts out is actually open source. It's, it's our primary focus. However, as I have mentioned earlier in the flow of a, a typical ML ops life cycle, there are so many lines of business and, and, and individuals uh, within an organization that need to touch this project and touch the software. Um, ultimately, when it lands on IT admin, they have to deal with things like governance <laughs> and, and other things that, you know, typical data scientists don't like to, to even think about. Um, you know, they have regulations on certain versions um, and may even end up running an inference workload for upwards of three to five years. So it's very important to them that enterprise support is something that's, a, that's offered as well as long-term uh, release cycles. Um, so, you know, while they may not have the flexibility to constantly update and get the latest and greatest versions, um, this is something that's very, uh, th that they have been asking for for a long time. So uh, everything, that, everything that we have included, everything that we integrate with Red Hat and OpenShift is available within this suite of software that we call NVIDIA AI Enterprise. Again, it's everything that you see in bold uh, on this diagram is, is free and open source and, and uh, free for anyone to try. Um, this is the support aspect is something that we offer uh, for our enterprise customers looking for that next level of support, direct engagement with NVIDIA uh, and Red Hat uh, and fully supported on Red Hat OpenShift. So again, these are the things that a typical IT administrator would see as value. Um, you know, I, I, I fully appreciate um, most data scientists are working, uh, you know, on their own workloads uh, and, and that's totally fine. This is again, all open source projects, uh, containers, libraries, pre-trained models, everything you guys need to get started uh, is available free and open source. But as these workloads get moved over to uh, an IT administrator, these are the types of things that they would see as valuable for them. It's, we've simplified their deployment. We have real time one-to-one -one access to support um, and it, it really put a nice bow on their MLOps lifecycle. So in summary, NVIDIA and Red Hat have done a ton over the past 10, 12 years to make AI ready for, uh, for enterprises to adopt on a global scale. Again, 
This isn't something that needs to be done in silos. We've, we're making it so this is something uh, that a, a, a typical IT administrator can handle. Uh, no longer are GPUs a, a specialized, um, you know, a, a specialty to have to uh, update to know how they operate with Kubernetes. Uh, NVIDIA and Red Hat have done a ton to automate this process, make uh, deployment you know, predictable and scalable every time, whether it be private cloud, public cloud, edge, uh, we collaborate in all these spaces to make everything run uh, as, as as predictably and performant as it should. So next steps, where can you learn more? We have a few links included within the deck. You can uh, you can start with our solution brief, or we also presented uh, more in depth uh, with two of our project managers, um, a very similar but longer presentation to what uh, Ivanov and I went through today uh, in the second link, which is now on demand from as part of NVIDIA GTC, which took place last March. Um, and then if you're more hands-on, we also have NVIDIA Launchpad. Uh, this is an offering available in, um, in several colo locations, we have clusters of OpenShift set up and ready with ready set demos uh, for folks to come in and try to build a model and run it to themselves. So with that, I'll wrap things up. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us directly or we can field them uh, in person in Boston. All right, thanks everyone. Have a good rest of the day, have a good show. And if you have any questions, we are here for you.